Yo, yo. Laser blue. Sign in. 365. Glad you're here today. You can uh test to some of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about. Yeah, chilling, 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 chilling. Had a, had a little too much to drink last night. I'm just getting up like maybe probably like an hour ago. Got up earlier, but I went back to sleep. Yeah, hanging out with the homies last night. But shit, we gonna jump right into it. Um. Y'all know the routine. Got any questions? Uh, Coach Sean Simmons, welcome. Uh, basically, I put up some stuff this this past week on my story, and I, you know, I, I randomly put, um, you know, loads up there for car haulers uh, with the rates, and I was asking, you know. Uh, Mike Cutter walked to the room. I was asking if if um, if it was a good rate or not. So, you know, a lot of people were saying they were getting it wrong. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, let me let me actually, you know, go back to this dispatching thing, just a part of it to see, um, you, to talk about what what you consider a good rate. You know what I mean? And we're going to be realistic, too. Because you get a lot of guys that's, that's out here on this, these platforms. They're not really being realistic on um, their rates. And they can talk about a rate that, you know, you get from time to time. We call those nuggets, um, gems, your money loads, or, you know, just a gravy, gravy load. Whatever you want to call it, you know, it's just something good that comes along from time to time. But, but I like to talk about is the regular, everyday spot rates that you see on the low boards, you know, that you get might get from some of your customers, what the norm is. So, um, I was, I just, I just want to touch on that, right? So, you know, we're not going to just talk about cars. We're going to talk about semi-freight. We're going to talk about hot shop, flatbed freight. And we're going to talk about car hauling, obviously, right? So, we're going to start with the with the easiest one, right? And that's that's the, that's semi-rates, right? And the reason I say it's the easiest one because it's, it's usually it's just one load, one truck load, um, your origin, your destination. And pretty much, as a as hauling freight, you want to at least, when I say per mile, this is obviously, you don't want to work for less than that because then, you know, you're not going to really make any money. So, obviously, sky's the limit. You get your broker, your customer, whatever, to, to give you whatever you want. That's fine. But we're going to talk about what's, what's reality out here. And basically, $2 a mile, okay? We're talking about free, okay? So... Two dollars a mile for the semi freight. That's the least that you want to be driving for, right? So you're looking at a load and you're trying to determine, okay, is this, you know, is this a good load? And that's why we starting with the easiest one first, because semi is just it's cut and dry. It's a thousand miles. You know, they're paying two grand, right? Two grand. That's your minimum, y'all. That's your minimum. You don't never want to go under two dollars a mile. You know, especially with the fuel being what it is right now, uh, your fuel surcharge, et cetera, et cetera. You want to calculate all of that in. But obviously, you want, you know, me personally, I would try to shoot for $2.50, $3 a mile on a load like that. Because um, I know I'm going to eat up a lot in fuel. So, but to say to my point is, is that a good load? It's an okay load. It's That's the bare minimum. Like, if it was a dollar and seventy five, I wouldn't even look look at that, I, or I would ask for more money right from the rip. You always ask for more money, but I wouldn't even look at that. So with big trucks, semis, whatever you want to call them, uh, tractor trailers, minimum two dollars a mile, and that's simple math. 
how many miles is you know is the run times it by two that's where you should be at you know what i'm saying you don't want to be under two thousand miles with a freight freight truck right so let's move on to we're gonna get a little bit more um complex now so now we're gonna move on to um flatbed hot shot right and i'm jumping right to flatbed hot shot over semi um flatbed because semi flatbed is, is similar to the semi trucks usually going to get a full flat flatbed load and you know obviously with a flatbed and a semi you know two dollars and fifty cents three dollars a mile that's what you want to be shooting for or something like that that special lots free but anyway so with hot shot now with hot shot Hot shot means basically that stuff has to get there. It's expedited. It's, it's they, they want it yesterday. That's what the true meaning of hot shot is, right? It's not a pickup truck and a, and a trailer. The true term of hot shot is um, it needs to be there, right? It's an emergency. It, it need, they need that piece of equipment. They need that piece of uh, machinery. Whatever it is, it has to be there, right? So... With that being said, those always pay more. And it was easier to put it on a pickup truck with a small bed, et cetera, et cetera. It'll get there faster. That's how the whole hot shot thing comes about, right? So with hot shot, you got a 40 foot um, trailer, right? You got a 40 foot trailer. You might have. 10 feet, you might see a load for uh, this cover, that's going to cover 10 feet, that's, I don't know, 9,000 pounds, right? And this thing, we're going to use the 1,000 mile radius, all right? So the load is 1,000 miles. That one piece might actually pay, you know, $2 a mile, right? So it's going to pay two grand for that one piece. But you still have 30 feet of trail left. And you still got more uh, payload capacity left. So then you then put, you, it's almost like car hauling. You, you building a load, you building your load onto that, um, onto that trailer. So now you're gonna use another 10, 15, 20 feet, whatever you can find on the load board, put two things on there to actually get you up to three and four dollars a mile, right? Because with a high shot flatbed, if you really want to make money, then you really want to be at $3 a mile because you can do these things by putting um, pieces, you know, so to speak. You, you know, the LTLs, less than a load. You want to be able, you, you're able to put those on there, right? So when you're dispatching, you got to be able to look for all of those kind of things. Now, I'm a driver slash dispatch. I do everything myself. So when I'm looking for cars, I'm actually building loads, okay? So, with flatbed hot shot, it's similar to car hauling because you have the option. Now, you will see full loads for a flatbed hot shot. And if it's paying, you know, $2.50, $3 a mile, you know, then that's good money, right? Now, another thing too, you're gonna find loads where they're gonna pay six, seven, eight, nine, even $10 a mile. So, but yo, usually those loads are, are short. They're only like a hundred and something miles. Like that's a lot of the stuff that I do when it, with the nine car now. Like those loads I've been doing this past week or, uh, or two, those, those loads usually a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars a piece. And I'm only running 150 miles. You know what I'm saying? So I deadhead to that point and get it. So in, in, in actuality, I'm doing 300 miles for that thousand dollars which you do the math is three dollars and something per mile i'm saving going in one direction because i'm empty and i'm not burning as much fuel saving in time so i can get there get back boom my day is over with i made a thousand dollars or i made 1200 i made 1300 so those are the things that you want to you know some people get so caught up in oh it doesn't pay this or it this this amount of miles when you're running local or regional, it's all about your expenses. Cause I'm, I'm gonna be the one to tell you, I'm not gonna sit. I'm, my truck's not gonna be sitting 
that because I don't see the best load on the on the board. I'm gonna go get something. I'm gonna go get something, and I'm gonna calculate everything in my head. You know, if I gotta go two, three hundred miles out to get a load that's coming back to Atlanta, I'll do it if that load is paying right and if it makes sense. Because I'm looking at one day's work. So if I spend two fifty on fuel and my time, and my time is within that clock, meaning the ELD, right? Then I'm gonna go get it, just like uh, three sixty five said. We're gonna go get it, right? Because it makes sense. It's all a numbers. Uh, it's all a numbers game. So, if I, if let's say, if there was a load in Brunswick, right? The load board was gr was dry. Brunswick's three hundred miles away, but that load paid thirteen fifty. It literally paid thirteen fifty. Three vans. So I went in there. I, I drove from Atlanta, went straight there, picked it up, came back to the dealer, and I made my money. Also, 365 just said time is money. I'm such a big advocate of that. Because you have guys that just sit around and lose time because they can't find a perfect match instead of making the money. Especially if you're running daily and you're running each day. You compute your, your thing off of your daily expenses and your time, not the miles. Right? So I can run to Brunswick and I can get that load and bring it back and have it delivered all in one business day. Leave three, four, five in the morning, shoot out there, load it, come on back, drop it off, come home. That's a nine to 10 hour day for me. I made 1350, I spent 250 in fuel, I pocketed 1100, I mean 1000, yeah, 1050 dollars, 1150 dollars, something like that. I put it in my pocket for the day and I was home. So, you know, You'll get some people that'll be like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not dead heading 300 miles to go do that. But then you sat at home and I went and made my money and came back home. And you keep doing that over time, then you, you at the end of the week, it's like, damn, my truck ain't really make no money. So when it comes to dispatching, you got to be able to look in your surroundings. If it's not there, then you got to go get it and bring it back sometimes. And sometimes you're going to get it both ways, you know, and that's, and that's to my point where... You, you actually build loads. You, know, you build a, a, a lane like that. You know, you start off dealing with one customer, a broker, going, you know, going out and then coming back empty or vice versa. And then sooner or later, you're gonna find something to fill that gap. But you gotta be able, you gotta be willing to, um, will I be able to watch this? Uh, yes, yes, I'm gonna always repost it um, unless something digitally happens wrong it was it happens sometimes not many but i always put it back up there as a recap so yeah you can watch it again and this is that was for uh uh garna 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 transport something like something like that um welcome welcome i never seen your name in here so welcome um but yeah so back to the point flatbed hot shot is a lot of ltls that's how you build your loads right sometimes you're going to find full loads but you have that option you also have the option to put cars on there so with that being said you when you build into something you know you might have one piece that pays a dollar a mile you have another another piece that pays a dollar and 50 cents a mile you know another one might be paid two dollars a mile so you add all that up and that's your line haul once you get everything picked up now mind you if you're doing multiple pickups you got to add the pickup mileage in also if you're driving 20 miles this way, pick up something 40 miles this way. Try to always find the in route so you're not going back and forth because that'll save you mileage and it, it'll increase your uh, mile, you know, rate. Um, now let's get the car hauler. Let's get the car hauler. Yeah, all right, hustling. <laughs> yeah, we're going we gonna to get to that. Um, now car hauling is a, is a, is a lot uh it's is it's the hardest of of the three, right? So with car hauling we're going to we're going to go with one single car, right? So and we're going to use a 300 mile radius. Right? So if you're depending on what the size of your car is, 
I mean, you're a car hauler, right? Whether you got a four car, you got a three car, you got a seven car, you got eight, you got a nine or a 10, right? So the more cars you have, the more options you will have on the load board because with the Stinger, I can pull nine car loads, which they have a lot of those that post. In BG's um, situation, he has a seven car. So you're right in between. You're gonna be halfway, you gotta build build loads a lot. You're gonna 50% of the time you got to build loads and then 50% of the time you're gonna have to, you, you'll, you'll be able to get a full load that's posted on the board. Whether it's from the auction, um, if you, like I was telling you before, to, to get what, um, the rail yard, stuff like that, they actually, once a dispatcher knows the size of your truck, they actually build loads to fit your truck. Um, so, with, with that being said, the cars, the cars, when you build a load, right, it's 300 mile radius, we got a seven car, we on the load board. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a headache, BG, it's, it's definitely a headache, bro. Um, and it takes some know-how to actually do that, so... Let's say, let's just say you're going to run, I don't know, what's 300 miles? Let's say Nashville, right? Nashville's 250 miles. Um, Car is usually going to pay about 150, 175, right? So that's usually like 60 cents a mile. And let me just put this, let me put this red tape here. A single car, no matter how far or close, well, I ain't going to say how far or close but how far it's going meaning you know if it's a thousand miles 1500 miles because the shorter this trip is the different the mileage rate is but it should never you should never take a car for less than 50 cents per mile and i'm talking about one car you should never take a car for less than 50 cents per mile and that is the bottom that is that is the 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 bottom line that you want to you want to take a car for and it all depends on circumstances also. You know, I'm not gonna go get one car from over here that's paying 50 cents a mile. I'm just, it's just not, a, it's not like, you know, brother said, it's 365 said time is money. You don't wanna waste a lot of time running around getting these cheap cars because that is borderline cheap. But that is the, that is the minimum. Please hear me clear, that is the minimum. You want to be upwards of, you know, 75 cents per mile per car. Um, obviously, a dollar a mile is like the, the target that you would want to be. And when you're building these loads, right, when you're building these loads, so you got 50 cents for one car. And in BG's situation, he has a seven car. So you times that by seven, right? So if you times that by seven, that's three dollars and fifty cents per mile, and that's how a car hauler load is calculated, right? That's not, I can't say that's how it's built, but that's how it's calculated. Now, how it's built is depending on where you're picking up from. So BG, if you're at an auction, you always want to try to if you got to do multiple pickups, you always want to do pick up multiple customers at one location, meaning like an auction, a dealer whatever the case may be, or drop off in one location. So you might have a customer in, you know, Baton Rouge that, that has cars over here and at this auction, cars over here at this auction, one at a dealership like that, and you run around, pick those up, then you go line haul and drop it off in one spot. These are the kind of things that you want to do um, to keep your, your, your dead head down and, and running around in your time. Because like I said, you're 50, 50, you're going to be halfway between building loads and getting full loads. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> yeah, my bad. It's just, a, yeah. Yo, how is, um, how is, how is, uh, it out there is the roads, you know, everything I knew they had a storm, but, um, I don't know, like, I posted some stuff. That's what brought me to this live. I posted some stuff, and, like, 80% of the people got it wrong. 80%, you know, they, they really got it wrong, and I was shocked. 
because you know I'll talk about this stuff and I'm just like yo you you know you gotta you gotta be able to look at the load board look at the loads and know right from from a blink of an eye is it a good load or not do you have to ask more for more money or not and um, I think um, um, what was it uh, I forgot somebody uh, 365 he, he said uh, 65 cents is the, is the magic number and that's that is a good number that is a you know 65 cents per car now and, and we're talking and mind you when we when we speak of this because this brother he's doing the same thing on a high level too so when we speak of stuff like this we're we're, we're giving you minimum numbers now we can get cars that pay a dollar two dollars a mile three dollars a mile but we're giving you minimum numbers i always like to talk low numbers because this is what to keep you in business all right so if you out here hauling cars and you and you um you hauling for two dollars a mile you ain't gonna make it that long you just not you're not gonna make it that long because the overhead and the expenses for a car hauler is too high you know um bg said because the problem i'm having i might see four cars but it's four cars they trying to pay cheap versus one yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, that's what I mean by your 50-50. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I pull loads on my five-car dually. Same setup that 365 got, right? Three, you're making the same type of money that I'm making with this, this nine car right now. Now, I still have some tweaking to do as far as my, my dedicated lanes and people that are, you know, relationships I got to make to get to, you know, more money. But... BG, you right, man. They, you can you can run around and get four cars. You can run around and get four cars, and those four cars are pay more than a full seven car load on your truck that somebody's trying to offer. And that and that's that's car haul. That's it's, it's always been that way. When they give you more than one car, they're gonna they're gonna save their self money because they feel like they're giving you, you know, more cars. I never believed in that because you still taking up a space on my truck. So, you know, all that discount stuff, you know, you just got to pick your poison with that. Um, the rail yards are cheap, but they're steady. You know, you consistency, time, and rate, you got to mix all that in and get the perfect formula. You know, everybody's situation going to be different too. Yeah, everybody, every, everybody's situation going to be like now, I'm stuck trying to come out of Florida. Florida's a bad spot to go to. Um, but you should not, you should, you should be able to, you got a Twit card. If you get a Twit, if you have a Twit, go in the port and get you something. They're not going to pay that good. I'm going to tell you that now. Coming out of Florida with a load of cars, which is seven car, you're only going to be about $2 a mile. But, and I'm glad you said that because now, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Florida's crazy. That's Florida's crazy for a lot of stuff. Florida's retirement state, y'all. Even with freight, when I used to do freight, we used to run freight down there. It used to be hell coming out of there. Um, you want to, you want to, I lost my train of thought. You want to, um, oh, okay. So if you know you're going to Florida, right? If you know you're going to Florida and you got that seven car. You want to average, you want to average $4 a mile going down there. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you're only going to get $2 a mile coming back. But then when you mix that in on the round trip, and now, BG, you, you average three dollars a mile, and that's where you want to be at. You know, what I mean, you're not always going to get the three dollars plus per mile that a car hauler load should pay every direction. But if you know that you're going into a, 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 a um, exactly the 365 said take five plus down, you know, I say four if you can get four, sometimes it might be hard to get five, but if you can get five, you can get six. You know, get as much as you can going down because you know you're not gonna you're not gonna eat coming back. So get full going down, so to speak. You know, um, and try to stay away from those spots. If you know you can't, you know, if they they suck. I don't go to Florida. Like if I do go to Florida, I'm gonna look and make sure I see something decent coming back before I even book. You know, I'm a book both. I'm a book one. I got my eye on one, and I'm looking in Florida. Let me see what's coming back. And then that's the hard part about car hauling because as soon as I toggle back to the Atlanta load and book it, by the time I get back to the Florida, it might be gone. And then I, you know, I'm gonna have to cancel that one. And, you know, especially if you're doing multiple cars, it's, whew, 
You got to be fast. You got to be fast. Texas is the same way. Texas is the same way. It's 800 miles from Houston to Atlanta, and they be trying to pay two two dollars and fifty cents um a car. I mean two dollars and yeah two dollars and fifty cents. Not I keep saying it. Two hundred and fifty dollars a car. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you gotta have a a big truck in order to make a good mile per rate coming out of Houston. So if you got seven, you got seven cars. What's that? That's like what five five of them twelve fifty seventeen seventeen fifty. Yeah, seventeen fifty. And that's what I'm saying. Like look at now, now the same price that they paying from Houston, you can go you can do a load to Savannah. Now Savannah, it's hard coming back from there too. But if you had your Twit car BG, then it'd be a lot easier because you can shoot down the street fifty miles and go into Brunswick Port. They always got something coming back. So you'll be able to put something on your truck coming back. Uh, Florida can't be too bad because there is car hauls all over. Yeah, Flo look, Florida I, Florida is tricky. And this is for uh, Spencer, Spencer Pro Logistics. It, um, if you stay in Florida, you can make money. If you're intrastate only, and you don't leave across them lines, you can make money in Florida. The, the lows locally and regionally inside of Florida actually pay. It's the ones that come outside of Florida that don't pay because they know people trying to get back home and they know, like the brokers know just like we know. You know, they, you know it's not like they're blind to it. They, this is how they make their money. They call it the backhaul, you know. You just gotta, you gotta look for stuff. Um, you're in Tampa. The Tampa's like, I like, when I do go to Florida every blue moon, I do, I go to Tampa area. Tampa, Orlando, Longwood, places like that. Uh, Ugly Dreadhead said, what happened if my MC doesn't go active due to money issues? Can I still use my DOT for interstate work? Um, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure um, if you just do interstate, do uh, in, in, in state weighted tags, then it's run your DOT. Um, I don't know what your setup is, so that could play a part in it too. Like sometimes if I don't have the answer, I, I know how to find the answer, and I, I'm not like really solid on that because I'm not in Florida, but I will check because I like you know to know stuff. So. But um, building, you know, this. So let's let's do a recap for semi trucks, and we're talking about bare minimum. Should never move your truck for less than two dollars a mile. Hot shot, um, hot shot flatbed, three dollars. You can you can fluctuate, you know, two fifty to three dollars. Car haulers, you should be at three dollars. And these are, the, these are the low numbers. These are the numbers that will keep you in business and keep you profitable. Obviously, the more you get, then the more profits you, you, you'll have. Um, I like Drake, so you're in PA. Um, I don't know. I don't, you know. Um, it, what kind of setup do you have? Do you have a, a non-CDL setup? You got a, like, what kind of setup do you have? Because the weight... You know, sometimes, nah, nah, you, yeah, you, you're good, you're good. If it's like, if it's like Georgia, you're good, you're good. If you, you run in-state tags, uh, DOT, DOT number, you don't need no if the sticker, and you don't need an MC number, if I'm correct. So, oh, you non CDL, you definitely don't need it. Yeah, these are uh, uh, car game motors. These are minimum minimum numbers. Yeah. I was like, the, you know, these are bare minimums. Like, if you go under these numbers, you're not going to make it. And that's, and this is just going back to um, some of the posts I had up this week. That's what brought, brought this live about. Because a lot of people got the stuff wrong that I was posting when I asked, was it a good rate or not? And that's like those loads from California, right? So there was one load up there 
it was 9,500, and it was coming from Oxnard, I think it was going to, to the Bronx. And it was like, they ranged, it was a few of them, they ranged from 2,700 miles to 3,000 miles, right? But when you do the math, that's 3,000 miles. And if you know, you know, like, when you're talking about a large sum of miles, the brokers usually try to, you know, they try to pay you less because they figure you, they're giving you more miles, they want to pay you less. Never made any sense to me, but that's the type of stuff that they do. Um, and, um, he said, Dreadhead said, uh, most people in Philly only want to do cars. I want to do, absolutely. You should do, get you a 40, get you a 35 plus five with the mega ramps. And, um, that way you can do freight. They got a couple different, um, freight trailers that you can put cars on and be versatile. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, cause especially you in the, you in the Northeast, you can run some, some hot shot freight around there and you can, you'll always be able to have, um, you know, uh, BG said, I want to try that Atlanta to Baltimore from Baltimore to, to Texas and back to Atlanta where I find them lows. Um, start at central, start on central dispatch, you know, central dispatch sucks, but they have the, the largest platform and it's just, you gotta, you gotta, it's a tool. Central dispatch is a tool. So just use it for what it's worth. Find those lows, build those relationships through Central and move on to other platforms from Central and keep building it. But you should be able to, um, you should be able to find something going up there. And see, the problem is, the problem you're going to have, the, the full lows, it's like 600 miles up to Baltimore, right? You got to at least be at 1,800. You know, you got to be at $1,800 going up. Now, how you get that? can play into what 365 said, your time. So if you're running around Atlanta all day long picking up cars, then that's a whole day just picking up. You know, so if you go down to West Point and get you some kids, they might only pay 1400 right? So that's going to be a $2 some change, right? But you're going to be able to go to one spot, get them and take them to one spot. So you'd be able to go down there low and damn near get to Baltimore in the same day. Right, time is money. Right now, you know, in Baltimore, coming back down to Texas, shit. Last time I looked, them them little them cars was paying eight hundred, you know, to a thousand dollars a piece. Right, it might be a little lower now. It's a couple months since I looked, but you're gonna get the maximum amount of money coming down to Texas. Okay, so that goes back to the Florida thing. If you know you're going into certain spots, then you try to maximize out of certain locations. So you're starting off in a bad spot going north from Atlanta. So when you go north, you're gonna be at $2 and some change a mile. So you gotta make that extra 50 cents up on the Baltimore one. So now you need, instead of $3 a mile, you need to be at $4 a mile because then you're going to Texas or you need to be at $5 a mile. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to Texas and you know you're gonna take another hit there. So, you know, but at the same time, it's like, what can you do in a week's time? Also, just like a day's time. What can you do in a week's time? Can you run that load up to, to Baltimore, drop that load, boom, that's 1500 in pocket. Then you get another 3500 coming down to Texas or 4000 coming down to Texas, right? 4500 who knows, right? All right, so let's say you get 4500 because that's possible, very possible. You get 4500 coming down to Texas, it's about, I don't know, 1300 miles, 1400 miles. Right, so you'd be over three dollars a mile on that run, right? So you get that done, and then you get down to, to Texas, and you grab. Usually, it's gonna be some big stuff. You got a seven car, you're gonna have three pickup trucks. That's gonna pay the best. Put them across the top. We put three cars on the bottom. Be out of there. You are gonna make you about at best fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars coming back to Atlanta, right? So you're looking at an eight thousand dollar week, and if you can do that Monday through Friday, and then spend whatever you're going to spend on fuel and then your time and you mix all of that up. And if it makes sense for you, then that's a good run. Don't get caught up in, Oh, you, you know, you taking that for $2 a mile or you doing this. It's, it's about time, consistency and, and, and the rate. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta keep all of that in mind before I get too far. I want to, uh, somebody asked me something. Garner transport. Since you have to build the lows for car hauling, should brokers stay away from trying to set up 
that sounds like it's not enough money for both. I'm a new agent, definitely want to be fair. Um, to answer your question, car hauling, it's enough room there because you're a broker. So if you get your leads, right, and you get your customers, you're they're gonna pay, you know, that four or five hundred dollars to you. And then that same car could be moved for two fifty, three hundred dollars on a load board. So that's how you make your money. Like it's definitely money in there, and it's a lot of small increments there, because you can get a whole bunch of cars all over the place going different places, and make fifty dollars off of this one, a hundred dollars off of this one, two hundred dollars off of this one, you know, three hundred dollars off. You know, I made three hundred dollars off one shipment. You know, just one car made three hundred dollars. It took me five minutes. So it's a lot of money to be made, and with car hauling. You don't have to actually be a broker to do this stuff. I can do this now. I got something up my sleeve that I'm about to do. Um, I've been doing it, but I'm just going to do it on a different level. But you don't, you know, mom, pop, uncle, you know, friends, whatever, got, you know, kids going to school, start off like that. They ship in their car. You get the central dispatch account. You post it. Boom. You make your money. Like, it's real easy. It's real easy to do it. You don't have to be, have to be a broker, have a broker's license, bond it, none of that shit. All you need to be is a transporter or a dealer and have a, a central dispatch account and post that, that car on the board. Um, too Fast said the objective is to weed out the broker if you know. Yeah, exactly. He did it. Too Fast did a, a, a great job at this, y'all. You know what I mean? He's new to the game. Um, I don't know, maybe a year or two. He got two trucks already, and he just, but he did what I'm telling y'all to do. He stayed in one lane, and he took the punches with that, that one lane. He did, he stayed, he stayed consistent with that one lane. Over time, you're going to build that lane. You're going to get more customers. So now, he doesn't have to go to the lower board as much. It's a feeling now, and that's where you want to be. You want your customers to call you and be like, hey, I got this, I got this, I got this. Can you get it? Then you get that. If you got an extra spot, then you use a lower board and fill in that, that spot. Um, but there's always going to be brokers in the game. And, you know, for the young lady that asked that question, you could um, you can definitely make some money with that. I'm, I'm actually going to do that at some point. I got to get a driver so I can buy myself some time. And I'm going to do that. Uh, that's what I'm working on now. It's rough though. Yeah, yeah. I got some. Um, I got some. Uh, I got some little things. It's, it's all about advertising. You know, you got to spend that money on advertising, but you got to gear it right so you make the money back. But when you, you know, get that advertising and put it out there, and you bring that traffic to you, you know, people. Cause I, I don't even advertise, and I get people that that randomly ask me to ship a car for them, and I'm like, yo, if I did this on a regular. It's going to start off slow. And like anything else, you got to build it up. Um, Car Game Motors said, I'm a dealer, so I can get it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it, the main two people is for. Was well, three people. Car dealers, number one. Um, transporters like myself, number two. And brokers. That's what you're going to find on Central. Yeah, so car game modes, you definitely could do that. Oops. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, y'all, I mean, you know, just um uh, you gotta you gotta know what's a good rate. Else uh, so you're gonna find out after the load is over. <laughs> and then and you ain't gonna make no money and you wasted your time. And it's you every just like anything else in in the world. Um, any trade, anything, whether you paint the wall or, you know, doing floors or whatever it is you do, it's always some type of finesse, a knack to it. And that's all you got to do is take the core of dispatching and then find your own little twist to it. And once you find that, and with the car hauling, it's, you know, I've learned over the years, and I've learned the hard way, but I've learned that. I would rather focus more on what I can get done in a day and what kind of profits I can, I can receive in that day over how much somebody's paying per mile. 
that's 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 just that's just me, you know, and it's been working for me. You know, I look at all those other tangible things too, but if I can make a thousand dollars a day, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a day, and I only have to spend two fifty and I can get it done within my clock. Now I'm not gonna go run do you know, work eighteen, twenty hours to do that. But if I can do that within those parameters, that's what I'm looking to do. So it doesn't when you look at it from the outside, you're like, yo, this dude is driving up to Nashville empty. You know what I mean? A lot of people are like, oh, I wouldn't do that. You know, way he could bring cars up there. But sometimes when you, if I, if I, see the thing is, when I get ready to go up, if I'm not preloaded, and that's why I say always try to sleep with cars on your truck. So if you go to sleep with a load on your truck, you can leave early in the morning. Me and my guy Ernest, we always say we like to be there as soon as the, the car is on the ground when they open. Right? So if I can't do that, but I see a load coming from Nashville back down here that's paying you know, 13, 1400, 1500. I'm gonna take my nine car and I'm gonna run up there early in the morning. So when they open at nine, I'm already there with my ramps down, right? I'm loading that up, hour, hour and a half, boom, boom, boom. I'm out of there, I'm back down in Atlanta and I dropped that off, I made that 1500 and I only spent a couple hundred dollars in fuel. So it makes sense. Um, 58, but car said, I got a two car trailer located in Philly about to get on the road in about a week. Any tips? Stay loaded. Stay loaded um, at night. When you go home and park, make sure you got two cars on there. And you'll see what I mean. You're going to see your money look different when you park with... Whenever you can park with a load, we call it preloaded, you 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 want to um, and get started early. Get started early for more than one reason. Because it's always an adventure. It's always going to be some shit that's going to happen. Something's going to get canceled. You're going to get a flat tire. It's, going, it's always something that happens. So if you leave early enough, give yourself more time, then you'll always, you have a better chance to guarantee to get that load done. But, you know, in your scenario, you're going to be running the tri-state area. Sleep with cars on there. And this this how you run your week. You sleep with cars on there. You preload Friday at the end of your week. Or Saturday, Saturday morning. You might just get up and go get some cars, put them on there real quick, come back home, chill for the weekend. Monday morning, you're already loaded. Five o'clock in the morning, you shooting up to North or North Jersey somewhere, right? Drop that off. It's early in the morning. It's eight o'clock in the morning. It's, you know, absolutely, well, he said weather too. You know what I mean? You're prepared for all that kind of stuff if you leave early. So you might lose an hour or two, you still can get the job done. And if everything goes smooth, then you home early. Right, so go up to North Jersey, New York, or whatever, whatever it is you're going because everything is congested right there. So, um, if you run that route like that by being preloaded, now you're empty at nine o'clock in the morning. You only got two cars to pick up, so you're going to run around and, and do multiple picks. You're going to do pick two pickups most of the time to maximize your money. So now you got time to run run to two spots, grab two cars get back down to Philly area or or this dispatcher at his best. I'm telling you, because a lot of people are always thinking out and back. No, out and pass you. But come home, sleep with cars on your truck, get up the next morning and then go down to Maryland with those cars. Because those cars are gonna pay more. And this is only if you can't find anything coming back to Philly or South Jersey, which is right across the bridge. Right, so if you you're in, New, in in North Jersey, New York, you grab two cars coming down to South Jersey. Snow was good. You come down to South Jersey, and you know, drop them off. It's twelve one o'clock in the afternoon. You pick up two more cars that's going back up to wherever you're going the next day, and then go home and park, and repeat that cycle. Repeat that cycle. That's your route for that two car. Okay, somebody had a question. Uh, Garner said, so many questions. I'm hungry and new, trying to absorb them. Oh, no, that's never, that's what truck, truck Talk Sundays is for. Um, yeah. But that's how you, that's how you do that. Um, it's so many different ways you can dispatch with cars. And it just, you know, but for the, for 58 per car, you, that's what you want to do. You want to stay preloaded at night, sleep with cars on your truck. 
and stab out early in the morning, get it done and repeat that cycle. If you can do that at least four times a week, you're gonna see your profit margin, like, you know, just increase. Because by trying to do it on the spot each day and waiting, and it's hard. AZ Holland, what's happening, bro? Um, it's hard, but you know, you can do it. And if you try to do it on the spot, it's with car hauling is just too much going on. Stuff can get canceled. You know, it, one car could throw your whole day off and then your day is shot. So that's why you always want to, you know, be preloaded the day before. And also, you also want to book your loads two days out. So if you got loads for Monday, you already want to be, you know, you got loads for Tuesday too. And then soon as you, when Monday come, you're working on Wednesday. You always want to be a day or two days ahead of the last load that you have. Because usually in car hall, in the norm is two-day window. So they're not going to let you book something out um, five days out unless it's a personal customer. Then they might do that. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, uh, always make sure you got something on your back. That's the best way, the best piece of advice that I can give you. Um, it's money. Because that money that's sitting on your, that's money sitting on your trailer. So anytime you got money sitting on the trailer, the outcome's got to be better. So, um... But that's that's pretty much it, you know. Far as the, you know, just knowing the knowing the race. It's not it. It's a, so much, so many things to um um. Uh, Az Holland, yeah, I did the I did the tour roll. Um, I'm sitting in the garage now. This camera is actually sitting where the Porsche would be. The Porsche, the Beamer ain't getting no love though. I don't know why. But the Porsche is booked up. This is out now this weekend, and it's booked for the next two weekends already. So I'm, I just started this weekend with my first one, and soon as that, like, boom, it's just, so it's, it's looking good. It's looking good. I think I'm going to have to adjust the price on the Beamer and maybe take some more pictures because, you know, sometimes you can look at this car and think it's a 6 Series, and I, 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 I don't know. Maybe the pictures are not really showing how nice the car is and maybe the prices I got it at. You know, I got it at two twenty five a day, which I think is damn good for a $100,000 car. Um, uh, Hustlin said, uh, ex explain, explain that. Okay. So pre-booking. So if you, if you got, it's Friday, right? It's Friday. You bringing in your last load, you know, you want before that, that business day ends, you want to, you want to dispatch Monday. You want to book something for Monday, Right. So that way, when Monday comes, the weekend comes through, because Monday is the hardest. So you don't want to have to get up on Monday, get on a load board around 9, 10 o'clock, because that's when everything starts, you know, getting put on there, and then try to work from there, because you're really, your Monday is really going to be shot. Because the only thing you're going to be able to do is book a load, go pick it up, and then come back home and park. Sometimes you're going to have to do that, right? So if you book Friday for Monday, and then when Monday, you know, and then even on Friday, if possible, because that's the hardest part, because of the weekend, right? So Monday comes, you already got a load, you're already good. So in the process of doing that, you want to book Tuesday and Wednesday during while you're doing your work on Monday, right? And then when Wednesday, you know, when Tuesday comes, then you book in another two days out to Thursday, because you already got something for Wednesday. And then when Thursday come, on Wednesday come, you booking for Friday, like that. That's how you want to. That's how you want to book it out. Two days out from your last load. And if somebody lets you book it out three days or four days, you're gonna find people that let you do that. Usually, when you do more uh, work for them and they know that you're trustworthy and that you will show up and you won't forget about it, then they they're like, all right, I got X amount of cars at the auction. When can you get them? You like, hey, I can't get to them till Friday, but I got you covered. They'll let you do it, but you gotta build that. Nardo, sadman, bro. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's definitely, uh, it's a lot of components to the cars. It's, it's fun. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just put this out there too. So car hauling rates right now are pretty much what they were or have been opposed to the freight. The freight is at an all-time high. 
Like, they're making, a lot of the freight guys, you know, they're making more money than the car haulers right now. You know what I mean? And they, you know, they getting it. But, <laughs> that shit is temporary. And I'm trying to, I'm here to tell you, like, it's temporary. A lot of them, a lot of them don't know because a lot of them knew they ain't been around that long, but that is temporary. It's not, it's not going to be the same. You know, come, you know, when things smooth out, you know, we get back to uh, the government stop playing around with us. If things get back to it, um, you know, we're going to we're going to see a change in that. And I'm not saying, you know, if you got a freight truck, go ahead and get that money. But just understand the market, you know, just in 2019, they was getting 90 cents a mile and they was down in D.C. complaining. A lot of people forget about that. And I just like to remind you before you go make extra moves to, you know, double up on your trucks and stuff like that. The money is good. Get it. Stack that money up. Run it to, you know, to the wheels fall off. But just know that freight is going to go back down to $1.56 a mile at some point. All right. If it doesn't, then that's great. Um, BG said, I'm trying to get more auction cars. I hate Copart. Yeah, Copart is a headache. Um, Copart IA. You know, usually got to go to the port, so you're dealing with a lot of dishonest people, and you know, it's just a headache. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, but um, okay. Um, I forgot too, bro. Um, Wallaby, uh, I, I can't pronounce that, but yeah, I, um, I hit you in the DM about the consultant. Uh, car Game Motors said, uh, what about insurance liability as used car dealer on Central? Would I need insurance as an auto transport broker or is the liability to the care? Yeah, for the most part, um, you signing up as a dealer. It's, you know, the stuff that you need as a dealer, that's all you're going to need. When I come to your lot to pick up the car, you're going to make sure that I have the proper insurance to put it on my truck and transport it. So you don't have to do any of that. Okay, Wally. Okay. Yeah, I'll, um, I hit you in a DM. I actually forgot. Um. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. What was something else, too? Oh, uh, I posted it, uh, the, the thing about the autonomous driving trucks. So, I just got everybody's opinion. I like doing stuff like that. And I was, you know, a lot of people don't believe that, that the, the, Autonomous driving trucks are safe. So, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I think I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work real good. I understand it, you know, down to the details. And, um, you know, I was looking at some of the questions and stuff like that. And, and I think what is going to happen, it's going, you know, it's not going to be, you know, obviously car haulers are going to be safe. You know, flatbed people are going to be safe. Uh, Daniel's son was good. Um, a lot of specialized freight is going to be safe. A lot of, you know, multiple picks, LTLs, you know, those complicated things. But those line haul, you know, those Amazons, UPS, FedEx, um, you know, those kind of places like that, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to get hit first because they, you know, that truck and pulling that grid and the yard jockey will take it from there, you know. Um. Ah, you funny. If you choose to use a broker, please keep in mind, keep me in mind. Oh yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, I mean, car game motors. You could, you could, you can have somebody because if you're busy, like the young lady up there, you could use somebody like her. Um. Or you can post them yourself. A lot of dealers do use a, a broker or a carrier, right? Like like somebody like me, right? For say, um, you can use a broker, you can use a carrier, or ba yeah, basically that's your two options. Or you can do it yourself. That's your third option. Um, a carrier ain't gonna do nothing but do the same thing a broker would do. Yeah. Oh, you trying to be a broker too? Yeah, you could do it. You you could um, you could do it yourself. I mean, it's not it's not hard with the cars. You're already a car dealer, so 
like I was telling you before, just when you go down to the sale and, and be buying cars, that's how you start right there. You just get your own, get your people from there and move, and move forward. So, you get other dealers to use you and they find out you're a dealer, they'll, they'll do it. They'll, you know, let you ship their cars. And if you had a truck, that'll help too. So, or if you had a team of guys that you use, that would actually help. And the more, the more um, stuff that you have, the better you'll, you'll be. You know, as far as you got, you know, five carriers that's, that's on speed dial. You know, you got um, a bunch of dealers that trust you. You know, they see that you, you're your fellow car dealer. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just the more things you have in place, the, the better your chances are to get in the, um, the business. What is the average gross for a three-car hauler? Uh, this for James. So, for every car that you haul, you should make a thousand dollars per week. At you know, at least like if you got a one car now, you you probably do two thousand, you know, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred, two thousand. But the rule of thumb is usually, and I over the years I had everything from a one to a ten, and it's usually around that. So, if you got a three car, the answer to your question is three thousand. And I'm, I'm always going to give you real numbers. I ain't going to give you these fantasy numbers, right? Can you make 5000 with the three car? Absolutely. But on average, you should be making $3,000 a week. And if you got a four car, you should be making 4000 4, If you got a five car BG, you should be making 7000 I had a seven car. I was always between six dollars and $8,000. It would fluctuate from week to week. So... With this nine car right now, I'm not struggling a little bit. So, but I need—I had two other nine cars, and before I used to be at between eight and ten thousand. I need to get back to that point, and that's what I'm working on because it's grind season right now. So I, I made a, a email, made a few phone calls, and um, hopefully next week could be a better week. So I'm trying to get on some dedicated stuff. Uh, car game motors, yes, that's 3K a week for a three car. That's, you know, that's what you should be making. You know what I mean? Like, can you make four or 5,000? Absolutely. But 3,000 and up per week, 12,000 a month, you know. And you got to remember too, if you're making 5,000, it means you did more work, you spent more fuel, you got more overhead. So sometimes that 5,000 gross Versus that three thousand dollar gross is not that big of a difference when you break all the numbers down. It might be five or six hundred dollars, thousand dollar difference maybe. Um, so you just gotta see what works for you. But three thousand a week. Um, BG, you you just gotta you gotta rough it out. You gotta um, if you gotta pick which lane you want, and and just ride that wave. Even if it's not wavy, you gotta ride it. Um, if you're going to do Houston or Dallas, just know that it's hard getting back from out of there. Um, so, you got to work it. You just got to, you got to, you can always get over there. There's no problem. Stay on the low boards. You know, when your case, the best way you can maximize your money going over. Um, with the seven car, I'll give you something right now. You got a, a service. They have a lot of stuff that you pick up from people's houses. They 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 wasn't paying as good as they was a couple months ago, but it's still decent rates. Some of them come from the uh, Ellenwood auction, you know, different auctions or whatever. But they all go to Verum down in Stafford, Texas, which is Houston. Yeah, Metro. So um, what you would have to do is you would have to run around. You got a seven car, so you're going to spend a whole day running around picking up these cars and they're going to range anywhere between 375 and 500 dollars right now right so you got seven spaces you should be at 3k to 3500 right now you're going to spend all you're going to spend your whole monday running around picking those up go home and park tuesday morning you got a line haul all the way down to houston you're probably making a beaumont park there chill for the night, 
get up in the morning, run that last 100 miles in, drop off in one spot. You're going to be there. As soon as they open, you're going to be there. Drop off and then find your back. You got to work on that backhaul coming back. That's the vibe was happening. That's what, that's basically, uh, oh, you was hauling for, uh, Varun. Yeah, they got, they got a Texas, they got a Texas lane. Um, you know, and I would say that because if you can get 3,000 going over and 2,000 coming back, you know, just kind of freelancing on the board, that's not a bad start. And understand what I'm saying. You supposed to be at seven a week, but at five a week, just doing that one turn. Now you can do that one turn in four days legally, right? So you still got three more days, and that's five grand. But my point is, you start from there and then you build on that. That's why I mean, ride that wave. You know, it's not going to be perfect in the beginning, but the more time you put in that lane, the better it's going to get. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, they got a big spot over there in um, in um, Stafford, Texas, right outside Houston. Uh, uh, Metro Logistics is a uh, Metro Loads. This is a car car game mode is Metro Loads. Dot com. Yeah, I mean, if you can if you could do it to Florida, the good thing about Florida, you can run that route um, twice a week. But see, the thing think about it. That's why I said everything is a recipe. So. You run Florida, you're gonna have to run that same route twice to to make the money that you would make going to Houston. And you might if you run Florida, you might run Florida twice, and instead of five thousand starting off, you might be at fifty five hundred, six thousand, but you got to do twice the work, All right? Or you can just run to Houston and come back and get that five grand, and then start building a customer base from there. Anyone coming out of Houston, Stafford, Richmond, look me up. I would love to meet you. Okay, okay, that's where you at. Okay, cool, cool. I'm um, I'm gonna definitely lock you in because I, you know, I'm considering running that route again. And if I don't, BG, I will give you a customer. But I gotta make that decision first. <laughs> I got a customer that will use some trucks. Uh, you can probably put four of them on there, and they pay five hundred dollars a piece. So. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yup. Um Man, that's I think that's about it for the day. We covered a lot of you know, a lot of stuff. I just wanted to clear clear, you know, those posts that I had up. I wanted to to make some sense of it for you. And uh you know, the guys that's in here that's already doing it, they know what I'm talking about. Um but for the people that needed to know, I hope you know, there's no your minimums. Just know your minimums. You can't move your truck. You know, I, I'm not. A, I call it busy work. I'm not in. I'm not a fan of busy work. Just to say I'm working and be doing something because when the numbers add up after you take all your expenses out, you mean it wasn't even worth your time. You could have stayed at home. So, and then you know you're not busy work to get you in trouble because you out there you ain't really making no profits and then something happened to your truck and now you're in a minus. So all of this stuff is very important when it comes down to dispatch. Really got it. I think dispatching is one of the, the the most important parts of this whole thing, and really knowing how to do it. So, yeah, they uh they for F two fifty sometimes three fifties um um some yeah they have different kinds of trucks Chevys and they might have vans, but they always big units. So you know you I gotta see. Like I said, I'm working on the Carvana thing. If I can get in with Carvana, that's my first goal so I can be home every day. Um, and I'm cool with, like, you know, if I can lock in at, like, 1500 a day, I'll be fine with that because my overhead won't be high. And, you know, my my net, like 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 I say, you know, I, with a nine car, I should make 9000 right? But I'll take 6500 seven 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 thousand 7000 over that 9000 if I can be home every day and keep my overhead low because my net on either scenario is going to be around the same. Like if I ran to Houston and did all that stuff, I can make the nine, ten thousand, but my overhead is still going to bring me down to about six grand or fifty five hundred in pocket, right? Or I can stay here and do the seven thousand and my overhead is going to bring me down to that same sixty five, you know, fifty five hundred in pocket, right? 
but I'm home every day. You know what I mean? If my truck breaks down, I ain't got to worry about being on the road, et cetera, et cetera. These are all things you got to think about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what we having them. Um, them rates were good last like last couple months, like three months ago when I was running the five car before I sold it. And I was pulling, I pulled a, a 1500 for a room on a, uh, from out of Fairburn, $1,200. And I was getting $1,200, $900. That's because a lot of cats wasn't out yet. You know, this pandemic still had people sitting in the house. And um, they were paying, man. But now, that everybody out, them, them numbers didn't drop. They didn't drop back down. But, shit, I'm going to end this live, man. Y'all know what I always say. Stay sucker free. Keep positive energy around you at all times, man. That shit is so important. So, so next week. Y'all got any topic suggestions? Shoot them to me in the inbox. And um, I'll consider it for next week's topic, man. If something y'all want to know or talk about, you know, just let me know. We out of here.